Oi! Look at this fish. Not a bad start to the day, Colin. First cast and I know. Grab. We saw those fish rolling and you were Johnny on the spot. Got that leech in there right away and uh. Welcome everybody Ooh. to the new fly fisher. I'm your host Colin McHugh and I'm here with Phil Rowley, Stillwater fly fishing guru. We're going to be talking about streamers and woolly bugger patterns and how to use them on still waters. We're here in Fortress Lake up in BC fishing for just absolutely huge brook trout. It's an incredible show we've got put together here and I know you're going to like it. Stay with us. Oh, look right. at the size of this guy. Oh, nice brook. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to grants from Scientific Anglers Sage Fly Rods Loon Outdoors Orvis Sporting Traditions Frog Hair Products Scott Fly Rod, Water Skeeter, Islander Fly Reels, Clacka Craft, R.L. Winston Fly Rod, and viewers like you. Today we're on beautiful Fortress Lake located in the rugged mountains of British Columbia. This lake is home to incredible brook trout fishing for species that average 3 to 6 pounds. The lake is located 90 miles northwest of Golden, BC, near the border with Alberta. Joining me today is Stillwater expert Phil Rowley. Phil is a very popular speaker, author and fly tire. His book, Fly Patterns for Stillwaters, is considered the authoritative book for tying lake patterns and has been a bestseller since it first came out. We were quite excited to get started and we both used different stillwater methods to fly fish. I was lucky. I got the first fish on. Fish. Fish. That's ah, a nice one. Well done, my friend. That was my first cast, so I would call that pretty lucky. Well, there's another one in the area. What you keep an eye out too. You'll watch three or four of them will follow around, curious as to uh -huh. what the other one is. What's he got? Now we should explain a little bit of what we we're doing here. I mean, you wanted us to come to this cove. Yeah. It's really windy out here, but there's more to it than that as to why the fish are here. Yeah, if you if you'll notice in there, we've got a lot of structure, debris. This is where they're going to hang around, find some food sources. A bad start. I'll get the net and get my fly out of the way. What we'll do is you'll just lead it to the net and we don't want to chase them. Now that was a uh, about a three and a half inch strip leech that I was using. I've got a, uh, a six weight rod with the uh, intermediate line as you recommended so I could get it down in the water column. Look how bright this fish oh, is. Yeah. This is not your typical brookie that you see. No, this you... isn't your eight to ten inch brook. This is no. a fantasy fish. <laughs> Be careful, my leech is swinging down below. I might have to leave you for a sec. Okay. Uh, get them up here. They just love to bulldog, don't they? They do. It's powerful, though. That okay. leech planted good hook set. See so how he took it right in the scissors of the jaw, grabbed it, and as you struck, that drives it right into the scissors. Good hook. And it was. Um, you don't yep. like that net. Oh. Probably looks like the mouth of the biggest loon it's ever seen. <laughs> Look at the beautiful colors on this thing. Okay. <laughs> Size of fish. Oh man. Can I get his head up? Yeah. There, there we go. go. Well done. First rule is get that fly out of his mouth so if he thrashes around, we don't do serious harm or to ourselves or he hooks himself again in, in the side or 
He's not too happy about this. Good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I guess he uh, he's ready to leave. He's ready, ready? to leave. Revival is not an issue. Well one done, cast, Colin. one fish. Well done. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so we found that lucky landing net spot I was talking about right here. So just to reiterate what we've got here, I've got a six weight rod. I've got number six intermediate line. I've got about a nine foot tapered leader. Yep. And I've got about a three and a half inch strip leech with one split shot above. And then what I'm doing is very slow, like you said, because yeah. the water's very cold. The ice yeah. just came off a week ago. And they're not gonna be, su they're active, but not super. They're not gonna chase no. something down. And that leech has got, with that split shot, you've got that wonderful pitching motion, which a natural leech swims with that undulating motion, so. Okay, well, let's get another one. Yeah. Here. No. You basically cast it out there, Phil, and you let it drop and yeah, and you're talking a, to me and boom. Yeah, that fly probably, this bottom doesn't look like it's got too much in the way of clutter on it. So that's fry, f excuse me, fly friendly. And that, that leech probably got right on the bottom and a couple of quick strips. I can tell it got on the bottom because the, the leader's coated in weeds. And again, just proof that those trout are looking. That's where lunch is. Now, what would they be feeding on in here, do you think? Um, like we haven't well, checked uh, yet. No, we haven't had a, a chance to check and we'll go ashore and poke around a bit, but you know, by the weed growth I'm seeing on here, that's going to be good population. Scuds are going oh, to nice like fish. that. Uh, dragonfly nymphs, damsels, as we talked about on the on the drive over here in the boat, and obviously leeches. Look at the size of that fish. That is incredible. It's, just, it's my biggest brookie. <laughs> You have to come to British Columbia to get it. <laughs> Is there an irony in that? Yeah, well, that's the thing about Fortress Lake. I mean, it's so unknown. Everybody thinks of uh, Northern Ontario, Northern Quebec, Labrador for big brook trout. And here, in amongst the mountains, these huge brook trout. Yeah, the scenery in here is nothing short of spectacular. You think he's ready? Uh, get his head up. We'll try. They just bulldog, eh? They're not, rainbows are very uh, acrobatic and these guys have just used their, look at the shoulders on that fish. He's just not terribly thrilled about this. About another three and a half, four pounder. Oh, he's running away. Come on back. Get that head going right. Strong fish. Oh, look at that. So we move this here. So that leech firmly planted. It's already out. Yeah. Just fell right out of his mouth. And then we usually just throw that right out of the net. So if he thrashes around, you don't run the risk of hurting yourself. Yeah, I'm just trying to get out of the net right now. There we go. Okay. Now, let's just carefully off. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> That's well, two dropped. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Fly didn't even get down to the yep. bottom. So, in a cold, cold lake, that, lake like this, and we've got the ice that just came off. Oh, there we go. Um, when you were just talking to me a second ago about this, about how the fish come into the flats and they're looking for insect activity, yeah. um, anything they can eat because the feed bag's on, right? Feed bag's on, and because of the, you know, the oh. the stratification that goes on in the lake over winter, you've got your your um, cooler water is generally on most small lakes at the surface and mm -hmm. the warmer water is actually down below um, due in part to uh, decomposition and the heat generated by that. We know photosynthesis isn't taking place, you're not getting the weed growth anymore so plants start to die and decomposition occurs and the decomposition process also utilize, uses up oxygen so these fish are being forced into a shallower band of water and by the time ice off comes on um, they're all stacked in here and of course there's food to be had as well so it's kind of the blend of both world, best of both both things and the results as you can see speak for themselves. Now I'm not sure but I think this fish has got himself wrapped around some timber or something. Well they do oh. like to dog down he's gonna go and try and wrap himself around yeah it's a good tactic and just sort of let him swim out of it for yeah, you. Yeah that's what he's done I'm gonna drop it now. 
Yeah. I know guys uh, for steel heading sometimes this is what'll yeah. work. Yeah. Well even you in just the, let the fish get it out. When you have shoreline vegetation, you'll get them, they'll do the same thing. They'll go wrapping around there and you can just lower the rod and let them it's amazing, they sort of go out the way it seems they go out the same way they came in. So let them drop it. I must have got snagged there. Something. And there's a lot of trees here. Yep. That's uh, again. That's another. the larder. <laughs> yeah. Now we're seeing f fish splashing around yeah. here. Do you think they're feeding on anything? They could be just rolling because they're active. Um, they could be chasing, you know, food sources. They're not a rise that's associated with the take of, uh, uh, you know, something off of the surface. Um, it's just sort of the the follow through, if you like. Their their path has taken them up near the surface. Is he back again? I don't think so. He might have done the old rub the jaw on the side of a tree or something. And is he still there? I can feel him on there and he keeps pulling it off. Uh, he's probably... What we might have to do is pull the anchor. And we'll go over there. Well, still want to run the risk of spooking. Oh, you're going to get a fish now. That's. I just saw one roll there a second ago. Just got to let it get down. Yeah, I'll try and pull me over here. Now, I noticed one thing is that these are all about the same size. They're all the four to six pound size brook trout. Yep. And we were talking about this for the food sources and I think it's important for everyone to understand is that these fish, there's no bait fish in here from what I understand. Oh, and so, sorry. Oh, you got one on? <laughs> yeah. um, I don't believe so. So you've probably got some, you know, the rule of the jungle law of survival, they're probably cannibalistic on each other. So I'm yeah. probably confident we could put some small minnow patterns on, although these leeches in this water stand out very well <laughs> and uh okay, we got another fish rolling yeah, there here is he uh, underneath uh, okay. whoa there we go we'll just drift in and see what he's done to you let's get this one in yeah. what you can do colin is just sort of pull us use the just gentle pulling will on your fly line will pull that boat right towards the obstruction Oh. Gonna need uh, physiotherapy after this. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have forearms like Popeye. Oh. Now it's amazing how old these fish will be in a cold water yeah. system like this. Slow growth rates in this kind of yeah. You know, cold, cool water uh, takes a while to to uh, pack on the meat and potatoes, and with the okay, got them off. long. No, Ice no. on. Oh, what is he on? Oh, nice fish. Yeah, a little smaller than the first ones, but none too shabby. And the beauty of these wooden nets, we can just... Now that's real critical to have, is a good landing net with a bit of uh, length to it. Yeah. And one that you're not going to damage the no, fish. No, that with. nice soft netting, and you just hold the fish there and let him catch his breath. And, whew! <laughs> Fortress Lake shower. That's about the smallest one we've yeah. seen so far. That was maybe only about three and a half pounds. Yeah. Isn't that horrific. Now the girth, the width across the back is impressive. Now, and is it, there a single paddle here? Or yes, there is. We have an oar. I'm having trouble getting this over here. What I'll do is I'll display my a, canoeing skills or lack thereof. We've got a 4X on this. It's holding up pretty good. But some of that tippet I got, I'll probably pull the log out. Typically, you're always wary of rowing into where they are and spooking them off, but I'm judging by the action we're seeing here, I'm sensing we're probably safe. People are going to think, Colin, that's the only fly you brought. <laughs> I just, uh, I, I hate leaving a fly in a fish, especially if this is just something simple to get out here. I have a view. My thinking is, is he's done the old cheek rub on a log or something. Can you still feel him? Oh yeah, that's the thing, I can feel one. He could have wrapped you around There's there. There's the log right there. See it now. Oh, look at that, one lone snag. Can we get over it's it? It's almost flat. Can you see him? Nope. I bet you he's, but he's gone underneath it. Yeah, but I don't see him. I don't either. So what I'll do here... I bet you he's done the old cheek rub. 
There we go. So now. Now one thing that uh, I got taught was that with something like this where you cast it out, first thing you should do is take the slack out of it. Yep. Because a lot of times while it's falling, you'll get a pickup. Yep. And you'll feel either movement or you see the line move or you feel a weight or something. Yeah, the second that uh, that line hits the water, you want to put your uh, you strip your line right over the thumb and forefinger of your uh, casting hand, which for mm -hmm. us is right hand, and immediately get it and bring in all your retrieves from behind there. So if you get a take, your your first drag system is that thumb and forefinger, and you can manage the fish from there. There we go. Followed that right almost to my foot steps. Foot to my foot. That's common. They will mm -hmm. follow it, follow it, follow it, and as you start to come up, it's like Sawyer's induced take on uh, nymphing. That fly just rises up in front of them, and it's a, it's an, it's a motion they just can't resist. Okay. You want me to get this one? Yeah, sure. Bring the head up there. Oh, look at the size of that fish. You know, let's get a still shot of that. Oh, beautiful. Hey, why don't you hold that out and we'll get a still shot. Okay. Let me just keep I'll get positioned with the camera here. If you just sort of can do the... Let me get the fly out. There we go. Get that out of trouble and I'll flop that rod out of the pitcher's way. You can just okay. hold it right out in front of you there. I'll be ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Can't get your hands around it, can you? <laughs> so much for that still shot. <laughs> Fortress Lake is very special for a number of reasons, and I spoke to the camp manager, Paul Leeson, about the lake, how the book trout got here, and why the fishing is so excellent. Fortress Lake is one of those rare, special places because it's tucked away in the Rocky Mountains north of, uh, well, kind of pretty much between Banff and Jasper National Parks. One of those true wilderness parks, very few of those left. Nobody's ever pushed any access in here. And even though it's a Class A provincial park in British Columbia, just over the uh, Continental Divide on the BC side, uh, there's not a road, there's no major trails, and you're literally in the heart of a vast, vast wilderness area. And I think that's probably the most special feature. There's just so few places left like that now. So in the 30s, the uh, Jasper Warden Service, actually, the Jasper National Park uh, Warden Service, they were so... Um, uh, obsessed with stalking a lot of the high alpine lakes and things like that, that somewhere along the line they got carried away and somebody, one of the wardens, packed in a, a bucket full of um, eastern brook trout into here actually. And what, what was really special is those were the late Lake uh, Nipigon stock, uh, the big coasters from Lake Nipigon, which some of you might have heard of. Uh, so it's a very genetically pure stock from the 30s that's been landlocked in here and it's been thriving ever since. We're a long ways away from anything in the way of civilization here, 50 minutes by helicopter. So while we don't have the luxury of having a fancy hotel uh, with everything that that entails, we've got a really comfortable camp here. You open the door and it's a wood paneled cabin, got nice log four poster beds, comfortable duvets. We've got a beautiful wash house with an old cast iron bathtub and a stained glass window. We've got a full kitchen with the same chefs I use at one of our other properties, which is a real top-end resort. So, you know, we eat well, we sleep well, we can be clean and happy, and, and it's just a unique circumstance. Just make a cast here and we'll talk about retrieves and still water. So, make the cast. As soon as that cast is made, the rod position I place down. We're fishing clear intermediate lines here, so I'm a big advocate of putting that rod tip, the first four to six inches, right under the water. You want the most direct contact you can have with your fly. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as that cast was made, we're going to place the, uh, the line under the thumb and forefinger of our casting hand, in this case my right hand, and immediately get the slack out because you can have a fly sinking through the water column, just fluttering down 
and the trout will come up and grab it right away. And if you've got any kind of slack or you're still sort of out here fumbling around, you're going to perhaps miss that, you know, that true trophy for the day. And then all retrieves are from behind the hand. And there's a variety of different ones we can use. Most effective one we've been using so far is just this slow draw, this slow strip, strip tease, six to eight inch pulls. Just gently bring that fly through the water column. That fly is going to pull up on this on the strip and as you let go it's going to pitch down and we're fishing leeches so we get that nice undulating action. Another one we can use and it's probably the most widely known in still waters is the hand twist retrieve where we come up with our thumb and forefinger, we pinch, we actually roll our hand, palm open, roll the hand around, grip the fly line and just rotate like this and to bring the fly in. And you can vary this from fast to slow and about the and the number of fingers you choose to roll around with. I'm using two in this case. This is great for slow water present, slow still water presentations, um, scuds, uh, coronamids, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because it's a busy retrieve and humans are impatient uh, by nature, so it's a kind of retrieve that keeps their hands active and mobile, but they're not moving their fly too fast at an unnatural pace. So, just a strip tree, strip tease, and a hand twist, and just vary the length of the pull the time between the pulls and the distance of the pull and you can imitate just about anything and everything that swims in still water. Mm -hmm. Again this is uh, going with what you said Phil that uh, varying the retrieves and so what I did there was two fast strips a long pause yeah. and as soon as I gave it the next strip he was there. Well those two fast strips typically they come over and go oh what's that going through the water and then it pauses and they go hey I can catch that and then as soon as you pick it up again yeah. you tight onto them and the results are sort of speaking for themselves Ooh, here. Nice jump. That's a nice brookie. Just can't get over A, how clear the water is here. You can see right down at the bottom like it was a just staring through glass and 12 feet of water. And the size of these brookies and the coloration is just a rare you see brookies in this beautiful silver tones. Okay, and bring his head up now. Yeah, and we'll just there we go right in there. Alrighty. He seems to like your fly call. He doesn't want to give it back. I know. He's going to. <laughs> I, I've been under the ice all winter. You can get your own leech. This one's mine. Well, this is exactly what uh, Paul had told me was going to happen, as did uh, JR. He was saying that, you know, with the ice off, the fish are very aggressive this uh, first few weeks. And uh, we're certainly seeing that today. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Nice. Just. <laughs> Don't try that at home, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am a trained professional. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, I've done that a few times. In fact, I did it, I think, with every big pike I caught in Labrador. was just squirt, squirt everywhere. And even with a uh, catch and release glove. Well, you get, if you get them under their belly, they'll sit usually quiet, but then they go, ah, I'm going. What's he doing? There he is. He's out investigating with these anchors trailing out the back, which is the way they should be, so when fighting our fish, we keep everything in front, we lessen the risk of a fish running around the anchor rope. They're sitting right on that, see that dark patch? Yeah. Because they'll cruise those edges too, eh? They'll use the, their dark backs will be camouflaged against the, oh. it's all right. A nice fish. A big one. So we've caught what 25? 75. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a good 25. Oh, oh got one. We got a double header now. Yeah, How's better, that? So we've caught this. like 25 brook trout now on various types of streamer and leech patterns with different presentations. I mean, and all your advice here has been outstanding. I mean, this is excellent. And this is probably a great time to. To end the show and say thanks, Phil, for teaching me so much about these different presentation methodologies for stillwater fishing here on uh, Fortress Lake. If you get a chance to come here to Fortress Lake up here in the Rocky Mountains, this is phenomenal. This is some of the best yeah, this... brook trout fishing I've ever had. This is beyond words. Yeah, this is, uh, it started well and finished well and the middle bits fished well. <laughs> I don't think Crazy. It's just absolutely not so From hard. all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Oh, that was a nice fish. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to grants from R.L. Winston Fly Rod, Clackacraft, 
Islander fly reels. Water skeeter. Scott fly rod. Frog hair products. Orvis sporting traditions. Dune Outdoors Sage Fly Rods Scientific Anglers and viewers like you. To order a copy of your favorite New Fly Fisher episode, contact us at our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com or call us toll free at 1-877-529-0696. Copies of this educational series make an excellent gift for your favorite angler or friend, and they also make a great addition to your reference library. $14.95 for one VHS tape plus shipping and handling, now also available on DVD.